please excuse the hair, but here is part one of who the fuck did I marry? Um, so I met my ex-husband around March 4th of 2020. We met on Facebook dating site and we also matched on Hinge. Um, I did not realize that he, <laughs> he was on both um, under two different names. So one was his actual name and the other one was a variation, like a nickname um, that he called himself different pictures so it was a running joke between us oh you ain't even recognize that um you had matched with me on hinge no i didn't um and also that should have been a red flag by the way you will notice in this story i called it the united nations of red flags it is so many red flags that i mean you would have thought i was colorblind because i ignored all of them so anyway back to the story we met around March 4th we exchanged phone numbers he called me and we talked on the phone um, for the first time in the first phone call he told me that he had just moved to Georgia from California from San Diego his job had transferred him um, because he was being transferred in as the new regional manager for a major condiment company that is based here in Georgia not gonna say the name and so we also talked about his childhood he told me um, he grew up in Philly he's from Philly both of his parents were deceased this is the first phone call both of his parents were deceased his father um, was a Philadelphia police officer his mom was a teacher he also told me he um, went he briefly lived in Augusta um, with his family he had two brothers and two sisters. He also had two half brothers on his dad's side. First phone call. So I'm just giving you guys the backstory. This was the first phone call we had. So we talked about family. We talked about friends. We talked about our jobs. At the time, I was working at Georgia State Patrol. Um, and he knew this and he just thought that was like, wow, you know, so you work with troopers all day. Yes, I did. Um, also in that phone call, he explained to me that he um, used to play football. He explained that he used to play arena football. I know nothing about arena football. Um, I know about NFL. I know about college. Go dogs! But I don't know anything about arena football. So he explained to me that he used to play arena football. He used to work at Apple in the off season of arena football. Um, and I remember thinking on that phone call, oh, okay, you know, like, good for you. I, I don't know anything about arena football. And I believe I did tell him that. I don't know anything about arena football. That'll come into play later on. So he told me, you know, I just, I just moved here. Um, my job is paying for my housing be and they are helping me to look for a house. He was like, I'm trying right now, I'm in Gwinnett County, but I'm trying to look for a house ideally in Atlanta like Brookhaven um, Sandy Springs he was like I, I really would like to move out there and so I thought you know this is that's great you know you're looking to get a house you just moved here he was like I don't really know too too many people here because I spend all my time at work and you know this job is really demanding so that was our first phone call we talked more he talked a lot which took me by surprise because I'm not really used to men talking more than me um, he eventually asked me out on a date our first date was set for Saturday March 7th 2020 um, he asked me what was my favorite restaurant I said Cheesecake Factory <laughs> and so we agreed to go out um, at the Cheesecake Factory in a location that was in between. I lived in Clayton County at the time. He lived in Gwinnett County. I realized that if you don't know anything about Metro Atlanta, that makes no sense. But basically, we lived uh, about 45 minutes apart. So we agreed to meet at the Cheesecake Factory over at Perimeter Mall, which is in an area, Sandy Springs, Dunwoody area. I was excited like I called my friends and was like I got a date you know blah 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 we'll see how it goes 
first conversation was good. Um, hopefully he looks like his pictures because you know that's always an issue with online dating. Hopefully he looks like his pictures. So on my way to our date, I took 285 and literally right before I got to Boulder Crest, the exit for Boulder Crest, I heard a boom and I lost control of my car. Thank God that this, well, not thank God, but I knew what to do. So I did not crash, but my tire blew out. So I called him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry, but my tire just blew on 285. I'm slowly making my way off the exit. I believe I pulled into a Chevron gas station and I said, you know, I got to get this fixed. I don't know what to do. Like I'm a damsel in distress kind of thing. He kind of paused, he got quiet, and he was like, where, you know, tell me exactly where you are, drop your pen. So I dropped the pen, and he came to the gas station. Came to the gas station, got out the car, and I was, I was so relieved that he actually looked like his pictures that I was like, oh my God, he's actually a attractive. Because he's like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, um... Oh, also, man, I apologize. So let me go back to the first conversation. Let me add something. He did tell me in the first phone call that he is that he was divorced, um, and that his ex-wife they had she had um, two children, a boy and a girl, who were teenagers, young adults. I think the girl was about twenty, and he said that he had a very close relationship with his stepkids. Um, but that he and his ex-wife had divorced because she cheated on him um, out in California. And so coming to Georgia was a new beginning for him. She was still out in California. The kids were still out in California. Um, and so, you know, he was like, there's no, I, I can't stand her, but I still want to be in the kids' lives. I have to put that in there because that will come back later. So this is just setting the stage again. That first conversation was we talked about family, job, friends, um, how he ended up in Georgia, me being in Georgia, the things that, you know, I would think people talk about in the first conversation. All right. Now back to the tire blew out. So he shows up to the gas station. He changes my tire which I just thought was the sexiest thing in the world. Um, and then he proceeds to say, hey, I found a play, a tire place around the corner. You need to get another tire. Like, you can't drive on this donut. So he followed me to, um, he followed me to the, to the tire place and then helped me get a tire, paid for it. So I was definitely like, wow. Um, and so the vibe was good. So anyway, I get the car, I get the tire fixed. We follow each other to the Cheesecake Factory over in perimeter. We hold hands walking into the Cheesecake Factory. So in my mind, I'm like, this is just this. Oh my God, I had butterflies. That that's that's the look of a woman who had butterflies. So I had butterflies. And um, we go in, there's a long wait. And so we sit outside and we just talk. And the conversation's great. And this is where he tells me what it is he's looking for. He tells me, you know, I'm, I believe at the time he was 42. He was like, I want to get married and it'd be for real. He's like, my parents were married 40 plus years before my mom passed away and I want that I want marriage family a house like that is what I want he's like I'm you know I'm as a man I'm ready to get married but I want it to be for real because the first time you know it really hurt me when she cheated on me so he's telling me everything that I wanted to hear um and so he was like what is it that you want and I said pretty much the same thing. I was like, I'm ready to get married. Definitely want to have a family. And <clears throat> I want to marry my best friend. So we both put on the table that we wanted marriage. And this is the end of part one.